Hey there, Lick and Riffers! Welcome back to yet another awesome fingerstyle arrangement lesson here on Lick and Riff, in which we're gonna learn the classic ABB song SOS. So, first, I'm gonna play it for you so you can see and hear how it goes, and then we're gonna break it down lick by lick, note by note, chord position by chord position, with tabs right here on the screen as usual. So, it goes like this. Enjoy. So let me just remind you that if you're having trouble with the arrangement lessons here on Lick and Riff or any other fingerstyle lesson, I have a complete beginner course, a seven hour complete beginner course on the Graphy platform designed to take you from complete guitar beginner with absolutely no guitar knowledge up to intermediate level where you can actually tackle all the material here on Lick and Riff. It's a seven hour course. Um, I put my heart and soul in it and I know that you're gonna love it. So if you need my help in taking you from complete beginner to intermediate level, that's the course for you. So check it out in the description. All right, so you start with 10 and 10 on strings two and three, okay? Okay, 10 and 10, okay? So it's 10 and 10 twice. And then on the same strings, you have eight and nine, okay? Twice, it's eight on the second string, nine on the third. Okay, so it's. And then you take this down two frets to six and seven, and you play it once, okay? So it's 10, 10 twice, eight and nine twice, six and seven once. Okay, it's third harmonies, okay? Okay, now the next lick, the next phrase, is exactly the same rhythm. You start from six and seven, you play that twice, okay? And then you have five and five, three and three. Okay, you play the five and five twice and three and three once. So, six and seven twice, five and five twice, three and three once. So what you had till now was 10 and 10, 8 and 9, 6 and 7, 5 and 5, 3. Okay, and then you play the 3 and 3 twice. And then you have 1 and 2. And then you can't go farther because it's not it's not G. Okay? It's this. It's three on the third string and five on the fourth. Okay, so you have okay, three and 
and three twice, one and two twice, and then you have three and five once on strings three and four. Okay? Then you put on an F sus4 chord, which is an F chord, okay, with the little finger on three on the third string. Okay? And you just play it, just arpeggiate it, okay, up and down, okay, strings four to one, and then strings two and three. Okay? That's it. F sus4. Okay, it's one, one, three, three. Okay, so this. It's a beautiful chord because it has two fourth intervals in it. A fourth and a, th and a fourth. Okay, so it's, it's kind of a crystalline chord. And to finish, you need two on the third string. Okay, to turn it back into F. So... Now, you can just play the two on the third string, or you can hammer it on, okay? Be a little guitar-ish. Okay, you can hammer it on. You can play the whole chord as you hammer it on. Okay? You can just play strings three and four. Okay, don't need the whole chord, okay? Okay? However, you feel like it at the moment, okay? Don't force yourself to play an exact transcription, okay? Whatever you feel like doing at the moment, do it, okay? Hey, you, you want the whole chord, play the whole chord. You want just the note, just play the note. You want the bass notes, play the bass notes, okay? Try different things. That's how you figure out your own style, okay? So um, try all the different variations, okay? It's just one chord, but it makes a lot of difference in sound. So uh, that's the intro. The verse starts with D minor. I play the bass first, okay, the D string. And then I play the whole chord, okay? And I continue playing the one on the first string. So it's, okay? So you have one, 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 okay? The first one with the chord. Okay, now you can play the whole chord. Okay, to give it a more classical feel. Okay, you can vibrate. Okay, and then you just have um, A7. Okay, so it's the open E string, and then A7. Okay, A7, it's A with the open third string. So... Okay, now again, you play the open first string, okay, the open E string, and then you play A7, okay, it's the second note, okay, it's not, okay, you can do this later, okay, you can play, okay, the dynamic here, you can play the whole chord, but the first time you do it, play it right, okay. And then you have three, 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 okay, on the first string, so you can play the whole chord, okay? But do it in a subtle sort of way, okay? Just play it once, okay? Or play it in a low volume. And then you have the open E string, okay? And then D minor again. Now, you play D minor and you pull off from the first string. And then, three on the second string. Okay, so you have D minor, A7, and then D minor. And then you just play the chord any way you want to, okay? Just any way you want to play the chord is fine. And then you just repeat it. Okay, and then you can... Okay, Ch you can change the dynamics. Or not, or just keep it the same way, okay? You don't have to change all the time. And then you have F. Now, um, there's the D-shaped F, 
Okay? The D-shaped F is, um, it's a bar, but you don't really need the bar. On three, with three on the D string. And the D-shape is on five. Now, um, this is a kind of a dense sound, okay? It's a dense chord. So I just like to play like this. Okay, I, I don't play the second string, so I don't put it on. And it's a lot more convenient than this shape, okay? Using the little finger. It's a lot more convenient to do it like this, with the little finger on the first string. So I play five on the first, five on the third, three on the fourth. Okay, and then you have the sixth harmony here, instead of the whole chord. Okay, which is a little bit too exaggerated for my taste. And then it's an added bonus because you can do this. Okay, you can just bar up to the fifth fret, uh, up to the fifth uh, string. You can bar the fifth string as well with three. And then you play. Okay, you can play five, three, three on the first string with the five on the third string harmonizing it. And then you're in C. So instead of doing this, changing the whole arrangement here, okay? You just start with the C chord in mind, so. Okay, and even if you play the second string by mistake, it's a sus2 chord. So it's not really a mistake, it's, it's, it's an embellishment. So don't worry about it. Now, the way to play this line is this. You play the F chord, okay, bass first, and then the fives. then C, the bass, and then you let go, okay? So you have three, three. And again, I play the third string all the way on five, so. Okay, and then you have a bar on three, just the bar because it's G minor, so. Okay, so it's the G bass, okay? Three on the sixth string, and then strings one, two, and three, and I keep playing the three, on the first string, so, and then the open E string, and then again you have D minor, okay, so, that's it, and you can just fill in the notes, you can just arpeggiate, okay, any way you want, and then you have the first line again, D minor and A7, back to D minor. Now, when you finish this line, you have the uh, piano transition, okay? So I turned that into, um, into a, a chord transition going upwards um, with the same uh, voicing as the F chord here. So you finish playing, okay? And instead of playing, Instead of playing that D minor with a pull-off, you play D minor, and then you play this, okay? So, um, it's, okay, it's, it's E diminished, so. I just play three, three, two on strings two, uh, strings, strings one, three, and four, okay? Three, three, two. Okay, so, it's this. So, and then you push it to the F chord, okay, five, five, three. And then you have the minor variation. So it's six, seven, five, okay? You push this two frets up, okay? Exactly the same shape, it's a minor chord. And then one fret up, back to the major shape. So it's 10, 10, eight. And then two frets up, it's another major chord, it's 12, 12, 10, okay? And in case you're wondering what the chords are, why does it matter? It's, it's a musical transition, okay? So you don't really need to know which chords you're playing here because it's just, it's more of a solo than a chord progression. 
it's kind of like a, you can create it as an exercise for your fingers as well. But if you really want to know, D minor, E diminished, okay? F, and if this is F, then this is G minor. If this is G minor, this is A minor, okay? A minor, okay? one fret up, major chord, it's B flat, and then it's C, okay? So. have the chorus. The chorus starts with F as well. Okay, so you have... Okay, it's the same idea. F to C. Same transition. It's the same movement. Okay, so... Okay, it's the same fingering as before, okay? But the timing is a little bit different. You play the F bass. Five, five, five. And then you have another five, but with the C bass. And then you have three. So it's F, five, 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 five with C, and then three. And then you have G minor. Okay. So it's G minor. Again, just the bar. You play the bass. You play three E strings with the chord if you want. And then you go... To six, you take the bar to six. This is now B flat. To turn it into major, of course, you need to add the major note. So you play uh, you play seven on the third string. Okay, you play this. Okay, hammer on from six to eight on the second string, and then six again. Okay, and um, I play strings two, three, and six. Okay, so it's G minor. And then the B flat chord. So, and then you have F again. And then it's a little bit of a folk guitar transition. Ah, sorry. Okay, it's F. You play the five and five again. You take it to three and three. And then F again. Okay, this time the normal F chord. Okay, so it's... Okay, so um, that was the famous first line. Okay, so it's F, C, G minor, and then B flat, F, 3 and 3, Back to F, okay? Now, please notice a nice guitar thing here where you have F, then you have three on the fifth string for C, then you have three on the sixth string for G minor, okay? So uh, on the guitar, it's pretty convenient. It's the same fret, okay? So you're barring. It's a really nice. Uh, it's it's a really nice coincidence. Uh, now it's it's not really a coincidence because F, C, and G are F, C, and G on any instrument, but on the guitar, on the standard tuning, it's in the same. Uh, it's in the same uh, fret. So uh, that's the first line. Now my favorite part, the when you're gone part. Okay, so it's a bluesy line. Okay, so uh, it's three slide to four on the first. String, and then three again, and then one, and you bar one, okay, and then it's B flat, okay, so, okay, I play the one first on the first string, I play the B flat bass one on the fifth string, and I put two fingers on three and three on strings, two and three, okay, so, and then I just play the chord, so it's E string, Fifth string and then the chord, okay, uh, to create a syncopation here. And then you have the same line, okay, with, okay, with D flat. So, okay, it's three slide to four, three on the first string again, and then you have the one 
and you need the chord, okay? So it's one, two, one. So you bar one with two on the second string, and then you play the bass. So yeah, it's a little bit uncomfortable, especially when you do it slowly. When you do it quickly and you get used to it, it flows a little bit better. Okay? And then you have this. Okay? Um, it's a nice breakdown of uh, an E flat chord. An E flat 9 chord, if you want to get technical. Um, because you can use the open 3rd string. So I just play 6 and 6 on strings 2 and 5. Okay? With the open 3rd string. Okay? Um, and then... I play eight on the fourth and then the open third again. Okay? And then you have F again. Okay? You have F, normal F chord. So it's when you're gone, you have B flat. How can I? D flat. And then you can try. And then just to transition to. Uh, to notify the listener that there's a chord on. And then, go on, it's F. Okay. And then you can go back to the verse, you can go back, uh, you can play the chorus again, you can play this line again, but the lesson has reached its end because this is the entire arrangement. So uh, you subscribe to the channel, download the tab for free from the website, okay? All tabs are free. And um, as usual, if you want to give anything back to Lick and Riff, everything goes right back to Lick and Riff. You can purchase the Strike Accord course, my full beginner course on Graphy, or you can, uh, you can buy my 10 course Complete Guitar Freedom course series. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And um, I will see you the next lesson. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now. Have fun.